With that determined, powerful burst up the middle in the game's closing seconds, David Phillips put the cap on West Georgia College's Braves 14-0 win over Augustana College for the 1982 NCAA Division III National Championship. From a program that had no team, no field house, and only one coach 28 months before, this band of young, talented, high-spirited athletes and coaches had molded themselves into a national champion in less than three years. Their incredible story has been told from coast to coast. Against all odds, they had dared to dream the impossible dream. And they worked, sweat, and bled until it had become... two-year-old football program composed of only three seniors, six juniors, 82 sophomores, and 26 freshmen accomplished such a remarkably short span of time, we have to go back to the beginning. The press and the fans have made a great deal about the long way in which the West Georgia College football team came on the football field from an infant program two years ago to the national championship this past December. But when you look behind the scenes and then try to realize exactly how far the West Georgia College football program has come since it originated in 1980, the story is even more remarkable. Head coach Bobby Pate, this was your original office on campus. You had to use a borrowed office, a borrowed telephone for the first three months when you came on board of July of 1980 while the field house was being constructed. And it was somewhat of an humble origin for your football team. It's kind of hard to think back and say uh, back in July of 80 that uh, some two and a half years later we would be national football champions. Well, Dan, as I've said on many occasions, had you written a script and said we're going to start a football team and here's how I hope it turns out, seemingly that's exactly the way it's turned out here at West Georgia College. And I can remember very vividly coming down the highway from uh, North Carolina and wondering where you start to begin a new football program. And I, the first day I walked in the door, there was about 25 people seemingly there to see me. And uh, they, people wanted to sell me things, wanted to play for me, uh, wanted to coach with me, and all sorts of people. And from that point on, it's just been a whirlwind-type tour. And then, of course, uh, the national championship there was a, was a great finish to a, a great start. <laughs> Coach, uh, can you think back to the day, uh, possibly, when you first realized that, hey, I've got something special here. Uh, these are some fine athletes. We might be much more than just a first-year football team getting started. Maybe there is a championship of some type in our near future. The first year, when we, of course, didn't play an intercollegiate schedule and we had the two months of practice there, and I detected at that time we had a lot of enthusiasm. We had better athletes than I anticipated in the Division Three football program, and I felt pretty good about our progress at that time, but still I had no knowledge of the caliber of the three, uh, Division Three football. I didn't know a whole great deal about it, so I just really didn't know what to expect in Division Three. I thought we had some good football players, but I didn't know what the other teams would have, so we still went into that first game against Miles uh, unknowingly. Coach, exactly how can you take a football team from scratch and you can't start much lower than uh, having to use a borrowed office and uh, start out not even having a football to have our press conference uh, even start that low on the totem pole. And in two and a half years, 
go from those humble beginnings to a national championship? Well, first of all, you have to have uh, a lot of support from a lot of people, and certainly we had that here at West Georgia College. We had great support uh, from our administration, the town people, the college and general students, and that, that got us off to a good start there. By the same token, I think it's uh, we had a coaching staff that was dedicated to what we were doing. They they were worked long hours, they worked hard, and it paid off for them. They were committed to what we were trying to accomplish here in this uh, first couple of years at West Georgia College with a new football program. I think, too, essentially, that uh, what we did here is a credit to Georgia high school football and the fact that uh, these guys came right out of high school and were able to play college football at any level and play it very well. So I think it's a credit to Georgia high school in general. But the final analysis, I think probably the most important thing is the players themselves because uh, they're the ones that actually did the actual playing and put in the time, and uh, they are a great bunch of young men and uh, were dedicated to the game, and they came here, of course, without scholarship and for the love of the game. And as I've said on many occasions, uh, I've never been associated with a group that enjoyed playing football as much as this did. This group particularly did. So it was a pleasure for me. It was a pleasure to coach them, and uh, it's just been a great two years, and we just feel like now that we've got a real good foundation to continue on with. The Braves began their march to the national championship with a 38-6 season opening win over Miles College and then returned home for their second game of the season against Baptist University's Eagles. West Georgia opened up the game through the air as quarterback David Archer hit tailback Harold Long for a big gainer and followed with another strike to Mike McConnell. Tight end Brian McCormick put the Braves on the board with a 14-yard TD pass reception from Archer. And the Braves were off and rolling to a 45-0 win, their second victory of the season. As the shutout would indicate, the Braves' defense played tough, allowing the Eagles minus 33 yards rushing and picking off a record seven interceptions during the ball game. A strong pass rush led by Ricky Hill and Mac McCoy put the heat on the Baptist quarterback all night long and helped preserve the 45-0 shutout. Then CBS Sports came into the picture as the Braves game at Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi was moved to Sunday afternoon and was televised throughout the southeastern United States. It didn't take long for the Braves to get on the board as Cartersville sophomore Lamar West took the opening kickoff and raced 92 yards to Pater to astound the crowd homecoming visitors at Millsaps College and also the regional television audience. After the majors cut the tally to 14 to 6, West struck again when he took the ensuing kickoff, and this time raced 91 yards to give the Braves a 21 to 6 halftime lead. Rusty Whaley made the first of numerous great catches during the season when he caught this 41-yard TD toss from Archer. And backup quarterback Frank Barden completed the scoring in the 41-6 final with a 48-yard TD beauty to Al Shepard, a player who was destined to become the team's top receiver in 1982. As explosive as the, as the Braves' offense was, it was their defense that earned accolades. Seven sacks were recorded in the ball game, including three by defensive end Angelo Snipes. Three more passes were picked off as the Braves' defense manhandled Millsamps and added to their reputation as being the toughest around. Next week, Hampton Sydney College came to town with a vaunted defense of their own. The Braves rolled up a school record 580 yards total offense in a 48 to nothing round. The Braves had two 100-yard rushers in the game in Trevon Daniels with 110 and Harold Long with 100. Incredibly, Daniels' 110 yards came on only two carries with runs of 59 and then later in the game of 51 yards. Long's 26-yard TD was one of the more unusual plays of the season as he bobbled the pitch from Archer, picked it up, and ran into the end zone. And then reserve tailback Anthony Causer put on a 60-yard burst up the middle. That was the second longest run from scrimmage of the season. David Archer tossed two TD passes to Whaley of 16 and then later of 33 yards. Again, the Braves' defense shined, including another sack full of sacks like this group effort by Ken Terry, Mac McCoy, and Ricky Hill. Two more passes were intercepted to run the season total to 15 in only four games. Next up was another home field bout, this one with Knoxville College. Again, the Braves didn't take long to get on the board as they drove 80 yards in seven plays to take an early lead. Harold Long rushed for a season high at that point, 144 yards on 17 carries and had several long runs during the game. 
David Phillips, the old-timer from Carrollton, got in on the act with the longest run of his career in college football on this 31-yarder. Lamar West proved that he can do something besides run back kickoffs as he caught a 24-yard TD pass from Frank Barton. And Al Shepard pulled in this 61-yard bomb in the offensive game for West Georgia. The Braves allowed Knoxville only nine yards rushing because of plays like this that had the Bulldog backs on the run all day long after an onslaught by the Braves defense that never let up in this 1982 homecoming game for the Braves. The season six game found the Braves more than 500 miles away from home in the unfriendly confines of Randolph-Macon College, Virginia, a team that had vowed to make amends for the previous year's embarrassing loss to West Georgia. And it looked as if the Yellow Jackets would do just that as they had the Braves on the run in the first half and threatened to take the lead in at halftime. But on a fourth and one play from the one-yard line, All-America linebacker Derek Germain came through with one of the big defensive plays of the season when he dropped the Randolph-Macon ball carrier for a loss. Then it was the offense's turn in a stirring 92-yard 10-play drive during the half's closing four minutes. West Georgia scored on this 12-yard from Archer to Shepard pass with only 30 seconds showing on the clock at the half. Opening the second half of play, the Braves put on their most explosive quarter of the entire season, scoring 28 points in less than 12 minutes and going on to another 34 to nothing route. Fired up by the ridiculing remarks overheard from a Randolph-Macon coach during the lackluster first half, the Braves put a licking on the Yellow Jackets they or their fans will not soon forget. The big hoss for the Braves offense was a little fellow named Tom Clifton who used his 5'5", 165-pound frame to roll up 107 yards, including several powering runs that had the Jackets reeling. Archer got in on the act with his 24-yard and also a 30-yard run. Whaley pulled in another TD pass, as did Shepard in the 34-0 win. As the shootout would suggest, the Braves' defense did another number on its opponent stopping the jacket offense cold on the ground and through the air. And the special teams put the clamps on with a super kickoff coverage that helped the Virginia team from the season loss. The following week, the Braves were in Orlando, Florida to battle Division II University of Central Florida in the Tangerine Bowl. Once again, an imposing coach's disparaging remarks against the Braves fueled the team's competitive fires as it rolled to a 41-7 romp before some 20,000 disappointed Central Florida homecoming fans. The West Georgia defense held the Knights at bay with gang tackling, sacks, and interceptions until the offense got on track and scored on this pass play from Archer to Todd Clifton. One of the game's big plays came on this 44-yard burst by Archer on a third and one inside the Braves' own five-yard line. Archer's 29-yard pass to Shepard completed the 96-yard drive. Trevon Daniels led all rushers with 117 yards, including several spectacular runs that lended credence to the boast that West Georgia had two of the quickest backs around in Daniels and in cohort Harold Long. On this beautiful autumn night in Florida, the Braves set a new school record for total offense in a game of 585 yards, including 345 on the ground and 240 through the air. Next in line came another team determined to make amends for an embarrassing loss to a first-year football team the previous season, the Morehouse College Tigers. But again, the Braves hammered an opponent into frustration from the outset, scoring 28 first-quarter points led by David Archer, who passed for two TDs to Whaley and Clifton and added two himself on a one-yard plunge and a 19-yard jump. The final 42-6 win would have been more, but a quick whistle blown by a deceived referee brought back this apparent 90-yard touchdown by number two quarterback Frank Barton. For the fans, at least, the highlight of the game came late in the second period when both benches emptied in a midfield confrontation that was quickly cooled off. After a bobble punt enabled the Tigers to take over on the Braves' one-yard line, West Georgia brought their fans to the feet when they held Morehouse College on that series and went in at halftime preserving the shutout. More gang tackling, sacks, and interceptions held Morehouse to less than 100 yards total offense in the game. In the regular season finale, West Georgia drove 84 yards in only four plays to score in their first possession when McConnell caught this 45-yard TD pass from Archer. Clifton added a 45-yard touchdown run among his team's leading 130 yards on the night, 
And Harold Long totaled 126 yards on the ground for the night as well. Rusty Whaley caught a pair of touchdown passes for the second time in a single game this season. And Ken Revels notched West Georgia's longest punt return of this year for a touchdown on this 71-yarder that featured outstanding blocking downfield. For the second consecutive year, the Braves finished the regular season unbeaten with a 45-13 win. The 1982 season that was completed in regular season play, West Georgia finished as the nation's leader in total offense with an average of 470 yards per game, first in the nation in scoring with an average of 42 points per ball game. First in the nation in rushing defense with a meager allowance of only 42 yards per contest allowed to opponents. And also number one in the country in rushing offense with a mark of 325 yards per contest. Great statistics and records are nice, but next on tap were the playoffs, and the Braves were determined to go all the way this time around. On a cold jury day at Grisham Stadium, it was payback time for the West Georgia Braves, time to make amends for their only loss in two years. Defending national champion Wider University was making a return visit to the scene where they had given the Braves their only loss in last year's Cinderella season, a 10-3 defeat for the South Region title. But now Cinderella had grown up and a determined band of West Georgia football players was also going to try to make the Pioneers their first playoff victim en route to their own national title. Things started badly for the Braves, however, as they fumbled the opening kickoff and Widener recovered and went on to score on a field goal. The Braves defense tightened inside the Braves five yard line and allowed only the three point play. It didn't take long for West Georgia to get on the board as Trevon Daniels broke loose on a 71 yard run to put the Braves on top seven to three. But Widener came back to take a 10 to seven lead until Lamar West set up the next Braves scoring drive with a beautiful 58 yard kickoff return that had the Braves in tremendous field position. On a fourth down and two play from the Widener 13 yard line, Archer got five yards and a first down to the Pioneer eight. Two plays later, Daniel scored his second TD of the game to give the Braves a 14 to 10 halftime lead. West Georgia led 17 to 10 late in the fourth quarter, but Widener tied the game with 90 seconds showing on the clock on this desperation touchdown pass. The game went into overtime with each team getting the ball on the 15 yard line with four plays to either score or pick up a first down and then score before turning the ball back over. Widener won the toss and elected to play defense in the first overtime. Archer went to the three yard line on the first play from scrimmage and was injured on the play and left the game for the next two plays. On a fourth down from the one yard line, Widener held and took possession of the ball. And on Widener's first possession, the quarterback Mango got inside the Braves five yard line on the first play. The Braves defense stiffened and forced a 24 yard field goal attempt, a chip shot by the field goal kicker Poulos. If the ball had gone through the uprights, the Braves would lose. Listen to Mitch Gray as he called the play. It's set up on the 14-yard line. It would be a 24-yard attempt. Both lines up. There's the snap. It's down. The kick is up, and the kick is not good. He missed it. He missed it. It's no good. Look at the flip. Those players are turning. The game now went into a second overtime period. The Pioneers scored on their first play and now led 24 to 17. The Braves looked a loser for sure when they faced a fourth down play. They had to score or see their national title hopes end. Split left is Shepard. McConnell and Whaley are wide right. Archer is your quarterback. He's got the eye behind him. David's going to drop the throw and look. Looking, looking, throwing it toward the end zone. It's going to be a touchdown! Rusty Whaley! With Rice's point after touchdown, West Georgia sent the game into a third overtime. After Clifton barreled his way to the four yard line on first down, Long scored on this six yard run to give West Georgia the lead 31 to 24. But now if the pressure was on Widener. They had to score to keep the game going. The Braves sacked Mangold on a first down play. And after a second down incompletion, it appeared that Roy Delay had ended the game with this diving interception. But the officials ruled Trout, the field had to be cleared of the multitude of Braves fans who thought the game was over. That brought up a fourth down pass that fell harmlessly to the ground 
to end one of the most incredible football games ever seen in this area. A week later, the Braves found themselves back again at Grisham Stadium to host the 1982 NCAA Division III semifinal playoff game. The opponent was Bishop College out of Dallas, Texas. The Braves didn't take long again to get on the scoreboard when Harold Long raced 78 yards, picking up 78 of his 169 yards in the game, a season high to give the Braves a seven to nothing lead. West Georgia's defense came to play, holding Bishop scoreless in the first half and putting extreme pressure on the Bishop College quarterback. After Bishop scored on an 88-yard kickoff return to open the second half, the Braves came right back and they scored themselves on a 54-yard TD pass from David Archer to Al Shepard. Archer scored again from the two-yard line early in the fourth quarter, and that made the final West Georgia 27, Bishop 6. The Braves were now on to the Stag Bowl to play for their long-awaited national championship. The national championship game, the Stag Bowl, was now set. West Georgia versus Augustana College of Rock Island, Illinois. The wing tee offense of the Vikings took the opening possession and were moving the ball on the Braves at will until Angelo Snipes sacked the Augie quarterback to force a fumble and end the scoring threat. With the West Georgia offense having trouble getting started, Augustana once again drove inside the West Georgia 20 and appeared to have a sure touchdown. The pass was dropped. After the Vikings missed a short field goal attempt, they got new life when the Braves were called for having 12 men on the field. But again, the Braves defense rose to the occasion and held the Vikings on this fourth down inside the West Georgia one-yard line. The Braves now had little time remaining in the first half to get something on the board, but they did manage to do just that. With only 29 seconds left in the first half, Shepard brought in the play from the West Georgia bench that would break the game open. Faking into the line, Archer faded back and heaved this 71-yard strike to Shepard that gave the Braves a seven to nothing lead, a lead they would never re relinquish. After a scoreless third quarter, Long got the Braves going again with a 30-yard dash to the Augustana 21-yard line. Five plays later, Phillips bulled his way in from the five-yard line and West Georgia had put the clamps on a 14 to nothing win. The West Georgia defense put the finishing touches on a shutout win when Snipes sacked the Viking quarterback on a fourth down play. It was the fourth time in the game the Vikings had tried to go against the Braves on fourth down, only to come up short. The final score, West Georgia 14, August out of nothing, and at last, the long-awaited, the impossible dream of a national championship had come to reality for the 1982 West Georgia Braves. So there you have the plays, the games, and the top players from 1982. West Georgia College, here's to the winners the 1982 NCAA Division III National Champions. No